I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes. Oh! So a threesome at the same time or you have two separate relationships? Threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. We've got Ms. Luce bringing Mr. Zuniga to court, claiming he's the daddy of her baby boy, Marley. But hold on, it's not just about the baby. She's also hitting him up for over $2,700 in baby expenses. Mr. Zuniga is having none of it. He's convinced he's not the father and he's even brought the big guns. A lie to detector test. Buckle up, folks, because this case was a wild ride, and we're about to dive right in. Ms. Luce, you are suing the defendant for $2,716.86, a back child care expenses for your son, Marley. Yes, sir. You say there's no need for a paternity test because you're certain he is your baby's father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Luce dropped the bombshell that they only had a fling for two and a half weeks. Talk about a juicy start. That's right, folks. Just a fortnight of fun, and now we're in paternity Eternity court. Mr. Zuniga was throwing shade left and right, claiming Ms. Luce was easy and that he'd always thought he was sterile because of sports injuries and past relationships without any baby outcomes. Talk about a plot twist. That's, Mr. Zuniga, do you have any hand. other children? No, ma'am. I've always thought I was sterile. You do? Yes. Putting the long relationships aside and trying to have, you know, kids with them and consulting doctors. I did a lot of sports. I've had a lot of sports-related injuries. But wait, there was more! Ms. Luce admitted she did the deed with a few other dudes after Mr. Zuniga, but also insisted that during their brief fling, she was all about him. Mr. Zuniga wasn't buying it, though. He was convinced she was cheating the whole time, and even said some random lady told him that Ms. Luce was getting busy with her husband. Scandalous! There's this one instance where this lady came up to me and she told me that while I was with her, she was cheating on me the whole time with her husband. And he, he looks just like the father. Red hair and blue eyes. And just when you think you've seen it all, in walked Mr. Zuniga's own mother, and she was on Team Loose. Yeah, she was absolutely furious at her son. According to her, Mr. Zuniga was just like his dad and needed to step up. She even had pictures to prove the baby looked like her son. Drama level? Sky high. They have the same features, the dark circles. My grandson was born with jaundice, Your Honor, no, and my out, son was born with jaundice. I came my out son with has a muscle spasm in his eye. Brown hair. My grandson has eyes. a muscle spasm in his eye. I look just like my eyes. father. I look, no, this kid looks nothing like Yes, him. because my son was is 50% Mexican. His dad was 100%. But Mr. Zuniga was standing his ground. He was confident that the baby looked nothing like him and that he had his eyes on another potential daddy with red hair and blue eyes. The tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife as they go back and forth with accusations flying faster than a cheetah on a treadmill. And all the while, Ms. Luce was holding on to hope that Mr. Zuniga would come around for little Marley. The more I see him grow up, the less he looked like. Because he doesn't matter. know you. And he doesn't have to look like you. You don't look like me the more you grew up, but I knew you came from me. Yeah, but I came straight from you. There's no doubt in that. It doesn't matter. Then, bam, the lie detector results come in. And let's just say, things were not looking good for Ms. Luce. Deception indicated. But the judge wasn't having any of their nonsense. She ordered a DNA test on the spot, and we were all left hanging as the two stars of the show were whisked away for the big test. Uh I order both of you leave here immediately, submit to the testing, and return to this courtroom where we will have the results. Are we clear? Yes, That's why I'm Jerome, here, please Honor. escort them out. Court is adjourned. Fast forward, and we were back in the courtroom, hearts were pounding, and we were all waiting for the DNA results. Would Mr. Zuniga's suspicions be confirmed, or would Ms. Luce have the last laugh? The tension was through the roof. Ms. Luce pleaded with Mr. Zuniga, reminding him of the good times, how he promised to be there, but he wasn't having it. He was still hung up on that lie detector test. You know, figure out this you were kid's there mine before. or not. You need to step up I and be there up. again. Well, I will if it's my kid, but I don't believe you. Everything shows me. So, that Mr. Zuniga, let me let me understand. I, I see you all are very frustrated today, um, and I believe it was due to the results of the lie detector test yep. that I revealed I in our previous session. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. And then the moment of truth. The results were in, and well, folks, this one was a coin flip. Is Mr. Zuniga the father? Is he going to have to cough up the cash for those baby expenses? Will he step up and be the dad he promised to be, or will he run for the? Hill? The drama never ends in this court, but the truth always comes out. Mr. Zuniga, you are his father. Oh, thank oh you, Keith. <laughs>
We've got a doozy for you today. This next case was nothing short of a soap opera. So there was Ms. Holthouse marching into the courtroom with a mission to prove who the daddy of her three-month-old son Zayden was. But here's the twist. The potential daddies were A guy who's totally out of the picture or B. And this is true. Her own mother's boyfriend. The crowd couldn't believe their ears. You confess it's either a man you shared a sexual relationship with who wants nothing to do with your child or the defendant who happens to be your mother's boyfriend. Mr. Shinewald, the mother's boyfriend, stood there, owning up to his fling with Ms. Holthouse, but was adamant he wasn't the father. And get this, Ms. Holthouse's mom was just outside the courtroom. She was steaming and ready to drop a bombshell on this whole mess. Mr. Shinewald revealed how the affair unraveled. It all started with a text gone awry. A simple typo led to flirty texts, and next thing you know, they were at a park making babies. Everyone was horrified, and Judge Lake was in utter disbelief. I had not really thought about it until I got a phone call from him. And he was talking about um, having sex and going somewhere. I snuck out of my grandma's house that night, and we went to a park. And what happened at the park? We had sexual relations. Ms. Holthouse confessed that she sent the text on purpose, even with her mom sitting right there. That's some next-level daring. And when Mr. Shinewald called to confront her, they decided to sneak out to a park and, well, they got it on. I asked if she wanted to go out and have a good time with me. And you said, sure. No! So how long did the sexual relationship last? It was about six months. Six months? Yes, yeah, sure. Did your mother have any idea this was going on? This secret rendezvous lasted for six whole months, and her mom didn't have a clue. But how did Mama Bear find out? When Mr. Shinewald and Ms. Holthouse's mom got locked up and threw some sneaky moves, Ms. Holthouse ended up confessing to the affair. And yes, they were still hitting the sheets during this time. Gross. I told her about what we did, and I never said anything, and she said that he told her about what we did, and he never said anything. And who confessed? Actually, I confessed. You did? Yes, ma'am. Jump to when Ms. Holthouse found out she was pregnant. She had no idea who the daddy was, but knew it could be Mr. Shinwald or another guy who was just not interested in being a dad. And get this, she had to sneak out yet again to tell Mr. Shinwald he might be the father. Oh, the drama. Mr. Shinwald and another guy. And... I had to sneak out and go tell Mr. Chenault that it could be his, maybe. You were honest? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Chenault. Now, hold on to your hats. Ms. Holthouse's mom has a 10-month-old with Mr. Shinewald, which means if he's also Zayden's dad, her baby sister would be her son's half-sibling. Is your mind blown yet? Because mine sure is. Ms. Bogardus, the mom, finally enters the courtroom, and she's visibly shattered. She had suspected something fishy when her daughter would get all cozy with her boyfriend at every opportunity. And she's been with this man for two decades. He was there when she was a toddler. Can you even fathom that? Now you have a 10-month-old child by Mr. Chanel. Yes. And you may have a three-month-old grandchild who's also your child's half-sibling. That's correct, Your Honor. But wait, it gets wilder. They all live together, with strict rules to keep Mr. Shinwald and Ms. Holthouse from getting too close. It's like they're living in a reality show, with no talking, no texting, and no alone time. It's insane! We're not allowed to be in the same room together. We're not allowed to talk or text each other. We're not supposed to really even be around each other. And if we are in the same room together, she turns down the TV so, so she can hear the conversations that we're having. Mr. Shinewald and Ms. Holthouse are lying all over the place, but Judge Lake is not having it, and neither are we. She's calling their bluff, saying they haven't been intimate since September, and we're calling foul play too. The tension is palpable. So Judge Lake throws down the gauntlet, offering a lie detector test to see if they're still getting frisky, but guess what? They shut it down. What secrets are they keeping from us, folks? Are we willing to consent to the lie detector test on the question of whether or not you all are still sleeping together? No, Your Honor, I won't. I'm sorry? No, Your Honor, I won't. How about you, ma'am? No, Your Honor. Anybody have anything to say? No, Your Honor, I really don't have anything to say, Your Honor. Anybody? No, Your Honor. All right, well, that's your business. 
As the case comes to a close, we're all perched on the edge of our seats. Will Mr. Shinuwal turn out to be the father, or will Ms. Holthouse's son be left fatherless? Is little Zayden's dad the same man who fathered his aunt? Or is there another twist in the tale? It's the moment of truth, and the DNA test results are ready. Mr. Chanel, it has been determined by this court. You are not. Thank you, Donna. I can hear you breathe a sigh of relief. Miss Bogardis. We've got another wild and unbelievable case from the vault. And trust us, you're gonna wanna grab your popcorn for this one. The tension was thick as they stepped into the courtroom and Judge Lake was ready to unravel this mystery. You claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. So, we kicked things off with Ms. Parker pointing fingers at Mr. Morton, shouting from the rooftops that he's the proud daddy of her seven-month-old daughter, Erin. But here's where it gets bananas. Apparently, Mr. Morton's new squeeze did a little whispering in his ear, turning him against Ms. Parker because they couldn't make babies together. Talk about a plot twist, right? Anytime I want to have sex with him, I'm going to have sex with him. You understand? Like, I was vulnerable. He called me. So, you know, we did what we did. So, hold on. You have a child with Mr. Morton. Yes, I have a five-year-old son. And he's not the child in question. No, Aaron is. We're off to a quick start as Ms. Parker spills the tea on her tangled love triangle with Mr. Morton and his lady friend. Threesomes? Yep. Unbelievable, right? And we're only getting started. I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes. Yes, your honor. Yes. Oh, so a threesome at the same time or you have two separate relationships? You no, know, threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. Fast forward, and it's time for Mr. Morton to give his testimony. He hits back with a denial so loud it echoes through the courtroom. He's playing the this timeline doesn't add up card, and the court is suddenly a detective agency probing into the nitty gritty details of Ms. Parker's love escapades. Talk about a showdown. This could be your child. It could not be my child because the timing is not right at all. I'm not tripping off of that. I know that that's my son's father. I know. He looks exactly like my other son. The heat is turned up by several notches when Ms. Parker and Mr. Morton spill the deets on their romantic escapades. Unprotected encounters? Check. Miscalculated due dates? Oh, you betcha. Apparently, Mr. Morton, despite his initial doubts, was with Ms. Parker during the kid's birth, playing Mr. Daddy. So what's with the sudden change of heart? Hold on to your hats, folks. Ms. Parker is suing for childcare expenses, and Mr. Morton's wallet could take a hit. The guy walks up to her, they talking and everything, and he swears up and down Earn is his. She had to keep reminding him that it's not yours, boy, it's not yours. I had sex with you after he was already in my stomach. Exactly, I but said. You told but that you didn't have sex. Now here's where it gets really spicy. Enter Ms. Dunlap, Mr. Morton's mother, armed with her own testimony. She's had front row seats to the father-son bonding extravaganza and swears that baby Aaron is her grandchild. Meanwhile, Ms. Parker was eyeing those child support checks once the DNA results dropped. And can we talk about the judge having to be a therapist? Highlighting the messy relationship saga between Mr. Morton and Ms. Lemon. Unresolved issues, anyone? Our support system, it was me and my daughter, which is Eric's sister. And Mr. Mother. Morton's sister. And her mother. And excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. So therefore... Did you just own. let her disrespect your mother? Yeah, real bad. I'm yeah. sorry, I had to catch that. Come again. <laughs> and just when we thought the curtain was about to close, the judge threw in some relationship advice like Oprah on steroids. She urges the lovebirds to untangle their mess for the sake of the kids. But hold on to your popcorn, guys, because the real cliffhanger is yet to come. I have to ask this. Are you all going to continue to have this unprotected sex? No and sex. This... No sex, Your Honor. He's good. He's good with his, with his wife. <laughs> How long that's going to last? <laughs> Feel me? I mean, well, what's, what, Feel what's me? the point of you He's not doing what we have? Mud. He's I mean, good. Ebony. Judge Lake drops the paternity bomb like confetti at a New Year's Eve party. Mr. Morton's life could be about to change. Cue gasps, cheers, and probably a mic drop. The DNA results are in, and Mr. Morton is about to know his fate. Mr. Morton, you are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no... Come on. Thank you. I need that paper so I can go down child support tomorrow morning when I get up. 
Ms. Parker, you came to court with a suit in the amount of $2,047. Mr. Morton is, in fact, baby Aaron's biological father, which means you are legally obligated. Let's jump into a wild case that had everyone in the courtroom on the edge of their seats. It's Sutton vs. Smith, folks, and guys, this episode was a roller coaster of emotions. So hold on to your seats. This one's about to get bumpy. Miss Sutton, you say you believed you were in an exclusive relationship with Mr. Smith until you got pregnant and discovered he was living a double life. You say the defendant has denied your daughter, Kaylee, and you are in court to prove he is your child's father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Sutton gave her testimony first, claiming that Mr. Smith was her one and only until she got pregnant, and bam, she finds out he's leading a double life. Can you believe it? But wait, there's more. Mr. Smith and his mom, oh boy, they come in swinging calling Ms. Sutton a pathological liar and accusing her of having a whole list of partners. Mother say Ms. Sutton is a pathological liar whose list of sexual partners extends well beyond just you. You admit to having two sexual encounters with the plaintiff, but say your relationship was anything but exclusive. Now, Mr. Smith admitted to a couple of hookups with Ms. Sutton, but insisted that their relationship was as exclusive as a public restroom. Not at all. And Ms. Sutton? She's not having any of it. According to her, Mr. Smith was living with her, coming home to her every night. But then, the plot instantly thickened when she tagged him in an ultrasound pic on Facebook, and another woman slid into her DMs. When I post my picture of my ultrasound when I got pregnant with my daughter on Facebook, I tagged him in it, and that's when she messaged me, and she told me who she was. By my understanding, when she was pregnant with their daughter, he said he, he wasn't with her. He said he would just want to be there for, for the baby, and that was it. This other woman? She's Mr. Smith's other baby mama, and she's telling Ms. Sutton that Mr. Smith was supposed to be with her. And Mr. Smith, his defense is like, whoa, hold up, what about Jimmy, Joe, and John? Yup, he literally said that. My cousin phoned us something like, um, is DJ around you? And she gave me the phone, and she like, uh, she said, oh, uh, I'm pregnant by you. I'm like, you pregnant by who? She's like, by you. I'm like, him, you lying. You gotta be lying. I'm like, what about Jimmy, Joe, and John? But Ms. Sutton? She was not backing down without a fight. She was shouting at the top of her lungs, letting everyone who could listen know that her baby looked just like Mr. Smith. The audience couldn't help but laugh when she pointed out that nobody in her family has a forehead that big. Oh, the shade is strong. You knew for a fact she was sleeping with other people? Yes, yes. Were you, Ms. Sutton? No. You've been denying my baby from day one. And From day I one, when she looked just like you, ain't nobody in my family got no big forehead like that. Ms. Sutton's dropping bombs. She says Mr. Smith didn't show up for two DNA tests. Mr. Smith clapped back, calling Ms. Sutton ghetto and nasty. Ms. Sutton's mom also jumped in, calling out Mr. Smith for being bought with cigarettes and beer. But hold on, folks, because Ms. Collie, Mr. Smith's mom, has got her own tea to spill. She accuses Ms. Sutton of sleeping with their family members and even catching her in bed with one. But Ms. Sutton came back with her own clapback. The lease was in her name. She said that's supposed to be my. Hold on, clear. Hold on. Just recently. Hold on, hold on. Just recently, she just stopped fooling with one of my family members' husband. Okay, but the lease is in my name, isn't it, right? The tension was through the roof. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, Miss Sutton started talking about how Mr. Smith would sweet talk her from jail, promising her the world and how she loved him, but he denied her and their baby. The courtroom had turned into an emotional battlefield and Judge Lake was trying to make sense of it all, telling Mr. Smith he's got to face the consequences of his actions. Miss Sutton was clearly hurting and Mr. Smith was worried about losing his seven year relationship if the baby ended up being his. I don't, I loved him. I I loved him with all my heart. And for him to deny me and my child, like, that's something serious. Because okay. he's lying to his family, lying to the other baby mama, lying to his mama. Now, I just wanted to understand where this was coming from, and now I do. But then, the moment of truth arrives. The DNA results are in. And let me tell you, you'd think it was an Olympic swimming contest with all the breaths being held. Would Mr. Smith's fears become reality? Was he the father of Miss Sutton's daughter? Would he have to say goodbye to his long-term relationship? And what about Miss Sutton, who had been raising Kaylee all alone for three years? Would she finally get the help she needed? Let's find out. Mr. Smith, you are the father. Oh, thank you after three you years. Three years. Okay, son. Three years. All right, Miss Sutton. I'm gonna see my baby. Three it's okay. years. Okay. It's okay. It's 
it's okay. Ms. Rubin and her sister weren't in that courtroom to joke around. To tell you how much business she meant, she brought her sister to court. Two sisters in court? You can bet that there was enough backup to fight Mr. Davis. Apparently, while she was growing up, she was told that Mr. Davis was her biological father. But now, after they have grown to be women, he is denying ever fathering Ms. Davis. To make the whole situation even more complicated, he says he has enough proof to back up his claim. Ms. Rubin, you and your sister are here today because you say that the defendant, Mr. Davis, the man you've always been told was your dad, is now stating that he is not your biological father. You say his actions are motivated by greed and he has torn your family apart. Mr. Davis, you claim you have legitimate reasons to deny paternity and claim to be a good man. In Ms. Rubin's defense, she said Mr. Davis had always been in denial of ever being her father. While she was growing up, he always treated her differently from his other children. It was so bad that even on Christmas Day, he would buy a bunch of toys and gifts for his other kids. But when it came to Ms. Davis's case, he treated her like she was a total stranger. Basically, it was as if she was constantly begging for her daddy's love. I wonder where it all went wrong. I mean, I just feel like he never treated me fair. With my brother and sister, he will bring things around like a Chris one Christmas, he'd bring a whole bunch of toys around, get them toys on top of toys, and then tell them, oh, play with your sister. Never brought me anything, always treated me differently. It's just, he never showed no love towards me. I'm always the one that was begging for his love when he was just giving all his love to both of them. When Mr. Davis was asked to tell his side of the story, what he said was pretty mind-blowing. For a start, he didn't even deny the allegations Ms. Rubin made against him. He said she wasn't lying, and he definitely treated her differently from his other kids. In his defense, he claimed that his reason for treating her the way he did was because he believed that her mother slept with different men while they were together. But Ms. Rubin called him a fat-ass lair. She was ready to fight him to the death. Yes, it is. It is. It is. And okay. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, Your Honor. Yes, please. The reason do. why I treated Cheryl the way I treated her, because her mother slept around. You was a liar. Your mother did sleep. Mama, you was a liar. Okay, first of all, neither one you of you all was in there when it started, okay? She had three kids before I met her. Okay, she had don't you mean three. She slept supposedly she had you three with birth. me. And she now was, she don't has don't how many more after me? I did a grand total of 13. Even if she wasn't his child, those weren't grounds for him to act as if she didn't exist at all in the first place. The judge was furious with Mr. Davis. You could see it in her eyes, and from her yelling, that all she wanted to do was pick up a cane and beat the hell out of Mr. Davis. I mean, there is a possibility that the kids might be his, so why not just try to determine if the child was really his? Heads are definitely going to roll in this courtroom, trust me. What would make a man go to the store and get toys for two of three children and walk into a house and disappoint a child for no reason? You should have brought her a toy if she wasn't your child, if she was your enemy's child. She, you should have brought her something because she's a child. <laughs> Like I said, heads were going to roll in that courtroom. It was very glaring that both Mr. Davis and Ms. Rubin never really had that father-daughter kind of bond. All they did was fight and accuse each other of so many things. At some point, it took a lot of work to determine who was actually telling the truth. Mr. Davis's story started to fluctuate. He started to claim he wasn't sure if any of his children were actually his because he knew for a fact that their mother was intimate with other men while they were in a relationship. I don't believe I was, I, I believe the judge was talking to me. Why men broke your promises then? Okay, that's, that, that's on me. That's, like that's on me, I own that. that. That's on me. Can, can, can I answer your question? 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 If you show up to my graduation, Mr. Davis, that, what did you do? First of all, Mr. Davis, first of all, that is a lie. Mr. Davis, let her speak, let her speak. I want her to explain to you. His other daughter, whom he claimed was his gold and child was definitely not on his side in that courtroom. He said he went all out for her and did every single thing she wanted while growing up, but she said they were all lies. He was never there for her and she could count the number of times she saw her dad present in her life. As far as she could recall, there was honestly no father figure in her life as she grew up. I didn't have a man figure like in my life to tell me how, how to treat guys I got to treat me so you know I look the guys like for love and everything. Like uh, again, like him one minute and be gone next I can have sex in a minute and be gone or whatever. It's just like he have not been there. So you were sleeping around, you just, you were promiscuous, you could not. Yeah, but don't fall too far from the You tree. feel like you were looking for a father? Leave it alone and talk to me because he's showing who he is by his 
state. Now their brother steps up to the podium to give his side of the story. He had quite a lot to say, and trust me, his story was very different from everything they had been saying in the courtroom. He claimed the only reason the father wanted to know if they were all his kids was because of very underlying illnesses that took the lives of both Mr. Davis's father and mother. These stories are starting to get pretty confusing, because who is actually telling the truth in that courtroom? As far as me hearing about this DNA test, it surprised me because if you ask for a DNA test and you claim you, I'm yours, you know what I'm saying? And then I hear that it's about uh, disease in the family. Why would you wait out the 27 years just to come to me with this? It's something you should have told me on the phone. Do something. Let me know Can what's happening. It's about child Can I address So now, anyone? disease in the family. Mr. Davis. Okay, here's what I mean by the disease in the family. I want my kids, if they are my kids, I want them to be protected. The conversation about child support pops up, and they get into another brawl about whether Mr. Davis paid for their child support or not. Lo and behold, Mr. Davis was in a lot of debt on child support. He was never consistent with the payment, and it accumulated into a debt of over $60,000. Is this DNA drama really about the child facing an underlying illness, or does he just want to get rid of the debt hanging over his head? Sounds like he has been the one telling the lies in this situation. Hey, for me to survive. Part, Mr. Davis, I will see this. I see small you know, payments here throughout nothing, the years that you've been making the system. payments. What I'm trying to understand is, is this whole issue with you and the DNA DNA test and wanting to know whether or not you're really their father. Is this really about the illnesses or is this about this huge it's both. child support debt? It is debt? both. It is both. It is both. Which Regardless of what the they want to say, and, they, and neither one outweighs the other. It was evident these guys were never going to amend things. Mr. Davis and Ms. Rubin just wanted to find out the truth and be done with it. Let's hear what the judge has to say about the whole case and see who the real father of the child is. In the case of Cheryl Rubin, this court has determined that you are tick, tick, her father. Oh, you already knew that. Uh, uh, you already uh, knew that. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Child support. Here I come. Mr. Sedeno was in the courtroom today to clear his name from the allegations of him being a father. In his heart of heart, he believed he was done with Ms. Ramirez and he no longer had any kind of feelings for her. He even climbed she was trying to pin the baby on him just so she could have him back in her life. Ms. Ramirez, on the other hand, something totally different to say. She claimed despite the allegations, Mr. Sedeno got another woman pregnant while she was conceiving her baby and now his covering his tracks by pretending he isn't the father. Sedeno, you are seeking the results of a paternity test for Ms. Ramirez's one and a half month old daughter, Aislinn. You claim you two broke up and now you have no feelings for Ms. Ramirez whatsoever. You say she's claiming you are her baby's father in a fraudulent attempt to try to get you to come back to her. Yes, Your Honor. Apparently, Mr. Sedano was Ms. Ramirez's everything, from her first love to her first boyfriend, and basically everything after that. She was pretty hurt that he would want to deny her and her daughter, and also claimed she was trying to pin a baby, they brought welcomed into this world in him. If I were in her shoes, I would also feel very betrayed. I'm not trying to trap him with this baby. I'm actually, I'm very shocked, I'm very hurt that he would even deny her. He's my first love, he's my first boyfriend, my first everything. And I'm tired of him sending me mixed signals. He comes to my house, he, you know, he tells me he doesn't love me, he doesn't want to be with me, but yet he's always trying to hug up on me, he tries to sleep with me. And I've even tried to prove it, I've proved it multiple times to his girlfriend. You know? What you're about to hear will definitely make you ask if Ms. Ramirez was a child because only kids would do something so petty. Apparently, Ms. Ramirez was in contact with his girlfriend. After she and Mr. Sedano had split up, she told his new girlfriend that she was going to sleep with him regardless of the fact that he was in another relationship. She wasn't bluffing, though. She actually did make the phone call while she was in bed with Mr. Sedano and sent her proof that she kept to her word. Wow. I told her that I was going to sleep with him and she told me to prove it, so when we were having sex, I called her on the phone so that she could hear. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. You got on the phone with his girlfriend. Yes. I gotta get this. <laughs> you said, I'm gonna have sex with my ex, which is your current boyfriend. Yeah, because I She would... said, prove it. So the way you decided to prove it was 
by calling her to let her for that she can hear it for herself. With a smile on his face, Mr. Sedano didn't deny that it happened, but that wasn't his focus in the courtroom. He was here to talk about the doubts he had about the child Ms. Ramirez claimed was his. It was pretty funny because Mr. Sedano and Ms. Ramirez were still very intimate while he still had a girlfriend. He tried to deny that it happened only once, but Ms. Ramirez was quite certain that their business had been going on for quite some time. Oh, she's time. got like five to four of the guys that she sleeps with daily, so I mean... I don't sleep with any... I don't have so, time. So, Mr. Sedano, are you submitting to this court that you've only slept with Ms. Ramirez one time since you've been in the relationship no, with your we, current no, girlfriend? No, I've... I have... I keep track of my monthly cycle. I know when we slept together. I'm asking you. We slept together just Not a few weeks ago. Not since I've been back from Atlanta. No. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Mr. Sedano couldn't even keep his stories in check. Funny enough, the child in question wasn't the only child he had with Ms. Ramirez. He had two other kids in the equation, but was very certain that the current child in question was definitely not his. I mean, how does that make sense in any way? To make things even funny, he claimed that when he went to visit Ms. Ramirez and check on his other kids with her, he was the victim in the situation. I'm sorry, you were the what? I got pregnant. I slept with someone about seven months before I got pregnant with Aislinn, and then and I didn't start speaking to him again until I was four months pregnant. So I was already pregnant with Aislinn when I started talking to that guy again. So how is he the father? So now, Mr. Sedano, you stated to the court that you got a list of doubts. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a list. I'd like to see that list. Yeah. Jerome, can you hand me that list of doubts? <laughs> okay. One of your doubts is that you weren't in a relationship at the time. Mr. Sedano had a long list of doubts that made him feel he couldn't be the father of her third child. He claimed the pregnancy happened way too fast, and he was sure the period they both had sex didn't add up to her getting pregnant. Aside from that, she slept with another man around the window of conception, which would also mean that there is no way he can be the father. Ms. Ramirez, on the other hand, denied it all. You heard through the grapevine, through a friend, that she was setting you up. Yeah, he showed me the text. And what did this say? Pretty much, I'm gonna get Michael to have another kid with me. Well, I just had a kid with my girlfriend a month prior to her baby that she just pregnant. had. So you got a baby right now yep. by your current girlfriend. Yes. And this baby is one month older. Yes. The baby in question here today, only one month older than mm -hmm. the baby you have with your girlfriend. Yes. It was a blaming contest in the courtroom, and they were very good at doing playing it. Ms. Ramirez claimed he never enjoyed spending time with her kids. She said every time he came to pick them up, he was always so eager to drop them off. Why? Because his current girlfriend didn't want him to spend any time with her. In his defense, he said any time he went to visit the kids, she also tried to sleep with him. On several occasions, he tried to resist, but as she seemed very persistent, they always ended up having sex. These two definitely need to see a therapist. Okay, how I can take the kids, but can you do this for me? No, That's it's not never why like there. that. I let him take the kids. He'll say he's gonna take the kids for a few days. He calls me hours later talking about, I need to drop them off. I need to go do something. He doesn't like to keep them. So I am more comfortable with him watching them at my house. And what's the point of taking them if you wanna return them? I'll, he'll say, okay, I'm well, gonna take them for a few days. The cats started to fly out of the box and Ms. Ramirez started to come clean about why she actually decided to get pregnant. She was very jealous of Mr. Sedano's new girlfriend. And the moment she found out she was pregnant, pregnant, she decided to have his child too. Basically, she wanted him to focus all his attention on her since she already had two kids with him. A third one would have made everything perfect. Maybe Mr. Ramirez was right after all. She was definitely trying to trap him and win him over. Super conscious mind. <sighs> maybe Let's my be honest, Ms. Ramirez. Oh, hey, maybe my super conscious mind. I did it to get back at her, which is, I feel bad for it. Just, I love my daughter and I got pregnant for the wrong reason, but that's why I did it. So is that why you so had an ovulation you calendar? admitted to the court that you I keep have an, an ovulation, ovulation calendar, calendar because I keep track of my monthly cycle. There's no reason an innocent child should be suffering because of the mistakes adults make. At this point, you sort of feel sorry for the little child in question. These two had made a fool of themselves, and they were trying to make their child suffer for their mistakes. Anyway, it's time to see what the DNA results say about all of this. Mr. Sedano, you are her father. I told you, she is your baby. You look surprised. A little bit. I'm not surprised. Yeah, you knew what you were doing. Yeah, you exactly, be okay. Ms. Cousin and her mother had one goal in that courtroom. That was to prove to her ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend that he was the father of her child. Trust me, these guys weren't here to play. From the looks on both their faces, they were ready to fight till there was no more strength in them. Mr. Bell, on the other hand, didn't even care about what they had to say. 
In his defense, he claimed Ms. Cousin already told him he wasn't the father, and all she was trying to do was ruin his six-year relationship. Others say you had no choice but to drag the defendant, Mr. Bell, into court today because you're fed up with his lies. Yes, he are. denies being the father of your seven-month-old son, Taquan, and has even gone to the extreme by blocking all contact with you. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. Mr. Bell, you say that Ms. Cousin has told you that you are not Taquan's father and say she's trying to use this baby to bust up your six-year relationship. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. There was so much tension coming from everyone in that courtroom. Ms. Cousin's mom was a force not to be reckoned with. She had all the power in the world to fight anyone who wronged her and her daughter. She wasn't the one who was hurt, but she sure was doing all the talking in that courtroom. She claimed that she was tired of all the lies Ms. Bell had been feeding people, and it was finally time for someone to put him in his place. Lies because he a two-time liar. He told my daughter this that he was single, baby, that he was not in a relationship. Why you can't I know he was in a relationship talk, with her because I seen his picture on her phone when she started Who is being about? with him. I seen how her attitude changed. Who did I, know, sleep I with? knew then that she was pregnant. Who did I you know, sleep with? You or I her? I met you. I met you at a relative house. Apparently, Mr. Bell lied to her daughter and told her he was not in any relationship, but deep down, he had been seeing someone else. Mr. Bell was definitely not going to keep quiet while they dragged his name through the mud. He claimed they only went out once, and there was no form of relationship in the mix. We went out once, but that was it. A whole weekend? No. I had to get back to her. You went out once, a whole weekend, yes. And then not only that, y'all had can't lunch she, together can't she let her talk. I she wasn't her there. Room. I go in her room, I find receipts with two combos on it. I asked her what a combo is for. She, for him and her. Mr. Bell wasn't just sleeping with her. He was also using her to sort out some of his bills. Ms. Cousin was furious. She couldn't understand why a man would lie to her daughter and still manipulate her into paying his bills. The worst about the whole thing was he didn't deny it one bit. You can definitely understand where all her anger is coming from because I would feel the exact same way. When she should have been... Were you paying his phone bill? Yes. yes. While she was paying his phone bill and paying him, buying him lunch, I was also doing other things for me and my husband have a roof over our head. We don't have no other income but what my husband do is work. And at the end of the day, I want Cortez to step up and take the responsibility and be a man and help take care of his son. Mr. Bell wasn't changing his story. He stood firm with his side of the story and said everything they accused him of was a big fat lie. There was no relationship between them and all he did was flirt with her and eat whatever food she offered him, nothing more. He even went as far as saying they had sex in the car and she never visited his home. Wow. No. Well, you said you already ate the food because she was buying it. Yeah, she offered. So, Mr. Bell, you said this was a one-time thing when you had sex with... In a car. Yes. Oh, okay. So you had oh. sex in a car. Did you use protection? Yes. No lie. Yes. No lie. Miss Cousin and her mom, they're claiming that this was going on. This was an ongoing relationship. That's not true? No. When Miss Cousin's daughter found out she was pregnant, she called Mr. Bell to tell him about it, and on the spot, he denied the pregnancy, saying it couldn't be his, and that he wanted nothing to do with the baby. When I came home, I called him. I said, I'm pregnant. He said, oh, well, call me back. Let me know what you gonna do. And that was it, and he hung up the phone. Did you tell your manager at work? I told my manager, because that's the day that my back was hurting. She said, and she you told go. me the baby wasn't mine. I don't want Why the baby you... by you anyway. Wait, he, he just his... said that you told him the baby wasn't his. He's a compulsive to lie. All he do nah, is you lie. Don't know. Was turning into an unending catastrophe in the courtroom. The judge had taken enough of their rants and arguments, and she decided it was time to bring the situation to a close by reading out the DNA results. Who do you think the father of the child would be? Mr. Baker or his so called best friend? In the case of Cousin versus Bell, when it comes to seven month old Taquan Cousin, Mr. Bell, you are the father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. I will take my, I'll take my child's put papers in the mail. You've been chirping off all day. All day. You, you could not let them get a sentence out mm -hmm. without downplaying everything they said. Mm -hmm. Everything. You got two innocent women standing here. Ms. Ramirez believes that her fiancé is the father of her two-year-old son and one-year-old daughter, but he's denied paternity throughout the relationship. 
Mr. Delion, her fiance, says the reason he cannot be the father of those kids is because Ms. Ramirez cheated on him with seven other men during their relationship. Just one question here. Was that all at once, or it happened separately? Because one is somehow worse than the other. Take me back to the circumstances that you found out you were pregnant with your first child. Well, at the time, well, just to say right now, Your Honor, that I'm very disappointed in Gilbert for everything. Gilbert was homeless at the time when I first met him, and I asked my mom if he can move in with us, and she said yes. My mom saw that he was smoking weed. That was a big no. She told him to leave. However, Mr. Delion says he was never given this choice. He insists that the baby was pushed on him, and no one told him that there was a chance he wasn't the father. He insists that he had to find out that Ms. Ramirez was cheating on his own, and that he was never told about it. He said he only found out the truth through text messages. So, at that point, you knew that you may or may not be Ian's father. Yes, that's when I began having and my doubts about paternity. But it stay. wasn't the voluntary disclosure that Ms. Ramirez suggests. When when she found out that she was pregnant, she told me I was the dad. And as I found all this information out, I had doubts. I mean, if she slept with other guys during the same week that our child was supposedly conceived. The incredible thing here is that Mr. DeLeon says he has a very close bond with two of the children. He even says he was the one who delivered them by hand and cut their umbilical cord. So it's clear that he wants to be their father, but he isn't sure whether he is really their father since Ms. Ramirez has essentially been giving it up like party favors. But what does Ms. Ramirez have to say about about this. At the time, Gilbert was working. He wasn't showing me the affection and everything. He wasn't being the man that I wanted at the time. He was working this construction job. He would leave at 6 in the morning. He would get home at 12 at night. I worked smelling all like day. weed. I worked all day. I'm at you home. Were saying I'm at school. He was not He working. wasn't just working. He was, he he was, was doing, using that excuse and was doing yes, other things. Yes. See, Mr. DeLeon says he found out that Miss Ramirez's mother had kicked him out of the house and had to move on. He found a friend who worked in apartment complexes and moved moved into that friend's house. Ms. Ramirez then called Mr. DeLeon, saying that her mother didn't want her in the house either, so he took it upon himself to house her in his friend's apartment. One day after work, a neighbor told him that his friend had boasted about sleeping with Ms. Ramirez. With your roommate? Yes, and how I found out that, I got off work, and the neighbor that lives right downstairs across from my boss, because my boss lived right downstairs from us, came out and said, hey, I'm not trying to cause no problems between you and your relationship, but this is something you should know. Your roommate just came down bragging about how he just did your chick and all this other stuff. And I said, Ms. I was in denial. It's hard to think of something more disgusting than that. She slept with her boyfriend's roommate after her boyfriend housed her when her mother kicked her out. Why did Ms. Ramirez do all this? You may wonder. Well, her excuse is as good as excuses go. And a family, so what was wrong with that? He was working all the time. And it's still to this day, it is still like that. But I'm saying, what would then lead you to sleep with the roommate? Just two. It was just, just too because I the point I didn't want to be at my mom's house I didn't care if I was with him it was just to be away Mr. DeLeon is really the most patient man in the world we cannot imagine any other man going this far for a woman who's gone this wild at this point it seems pretty obvious that it's likely that both Miss Ramirez's kids may not belong to Mr. DeLeon after all in fact we would be extremely surprised if they did so when did you find out she was pregnant and Annalise may not have been yours well after we had lived in the apartment for a couple of months. We got into arguments and whatnot, and uh, she moved back home. We hadn't talked for a couple of months because we got in our argument. I get a call from her stating, hey, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> why does that concern me? Now, Ms. Ramirez says that all of this is simply par for course since Mr. DeLeon promised her that he would always be there for her. Okay, maybe he did promise that, but we are pretty sure he didn't promise that he would be there for her if she slept with multiple men and may have had kids by them. Are you taking for granted that he keeps taking you back? He keeps saying he's gonna be there? And that's what okay, I believe. Okay, because now this is child number two and more down. And that, that's what I believe, Your Honor, that she kept on taking advantage of me because after this child was born, no more than a couple months later, she ended up leaving me and telling me that these kids aren't mine over an argument because I'm working too much. The picture is one of another man holding the baby Ms. Ramirez supposedly delivered for Mr. DeLeon, and the man in the picture captioned it with my baby girl. In a in a letter he sent to Mr. DeLeon, the man also says he will do the job of a father better and will take care of his kids better. That's a lot to take in, and more than enough reason for Mr. DeLeon to doubt the paternity of those two kids. My they parents all, have their doubts because of the stuff when that they she's want done to, be to me, so they doubt that these are my well, children. Well, she just said she understands why you have doubt. And she's, she says about my parents, my parents don't like her because of the stuff that she's done to me in the past. They had no problems with her before.
Once they found out she was cheating on me, they didn't want anything to do with her. Of course, it matters. Now, let's find out the truth behind all of this. Who's really the father of these kids? Mr. De Leon, you are his father. Let's go to the second result. Mr. De Leon, you are her father. You are there. Thank you so much. That means the world to me at this point in time. And Ms. Ramirez, you are one lucky lady. <laughs> Very differently. And you understand this, right? Yes, ma'am. It's probably best not to accompany your adulterous husband to paternity court. And even if you do that, it's probably best not to shout and scream throughout the entire heating. But that's precisely what Mrs. McKinley did with her husband of 17 years, Mr. McKinley. She was certain that her husband wasn't the father of Ms. Thompson's child, and she was determined to prove it. You admit that Ms. Thompson was an affair gone wrong, and you say Ms. Thompson needs to leave you and your wife of 17 years alone and find her baby's father. Is that yes, correct? Now, Ms. Thompson, how did you end up in a relationship with a married man? Okay, I ended up in a relationship with Terrell, and I wouldn't consider it a relationship. I would consider it friends with benefits. This case quickly devolves into an argument that even the judge can't keep up with once Mrs. McKinley enters the frame. So we protected ourselves majority of the time. I had been drinking, and we had me yeah, messed yeah. around. I wasn't sober enough to make the right decisions, and he knew that. That's a lie. So he took That's advantage of that. That's a lie. Okay, Not so wait a minute. Did you know he was married? He told me that he was separate. She lied. She, she lied. lied. She know Yana. They weren't together. She lied. in a shed. She lied. And he stayed in a room with a masculine lady. She lied, Yana. Mrs. McKinley seems aware that her husband indeed slept with Miss Thompson, but she somehow doesn't think that means he could be the father of her child. And you've just got to ask yourself why. If she accepts that her husband cheated on her with a side chick, why is she with him in court? And why is she taking his side? Does she just love him that much? Miss McKinley, yeah, I want to know from you. How did you find out about all this? I, okay, ma'am. One of the girls up there told me that my husband have a young girl in the room. So I knew I had a picture how the girl looked. So I went over myself, knocked on the door. He asked who was it. I didn't answer. So he opened the door. I went in there. She laying under the, in the bed, under the cover. Now, Miss Thompson is saying that she wasn't really a side chick to Mr. McKinley, and he was actually treating her like his girlfriend. And that makes sense. If someone takes you to see their family, they are probably serious about you. But how serious could they really be about you if they already had a wife for 17 years? It, he grew into it, but when he was born, it's genetic things. I asked Terrell about my son. I told him about it. Oh, yeah, that's me. So if that ain't your baby, take your shoe off. Let me see that. your toes. You want to see my Yeah, toe? let me see. Take them off. You got on, did you put on socks today? So you say <laughs> the overlapping of toes did not come toe, from me. And it didn't come from you. He admitted that he had. For some reason, Mr. McKinley doesn't want to show us his toes in court. At this point, you kind of start to side with Ms. Thompson against Mr. McKinley and his crazy wife. But it appears that Mrs. McKinley is even crazier than anyone thought. So you got a text, mm -hmm. and it was this picture, and the caption was Legend's Legend real, real Father. Yes, Goodbye. Yeah, good I have nothing to hide. I did not say that. You can go ahead and prove it. So go how do you think they got, got this text if it didn't come from you? This woman made a fake page. I have my page private. That's how I know it got to be an app, because I Oh, you're write. saying they made this. They you know, created they this. They made it up, because she, she made up a whole wow. fake page. Miss Thompson can cope all she likes about not wanting too much from her supposed baby daddy, but the fact remains that she slept with him and had a pretty real relationship with him. And she did all of this while knowing he had a wife and no money. So all of her mouthing off and going wild is really not necessary. And the judge tells her exactly that. As you speak, at first I wanted you to get the chip off your shoulder because I thought maybe after you got it off, we could get to really who you are and how this happened. I all in my mind as I'm me. saying is, what are we going to do? I did like, expect How do we do that? Of course you did. I made a mistake. Of course you did. Now, if you all are trying to see the child, that's what I want to get to next. Legend's born. Mr. McKinley says he's only seen his kid, Legend, three times in the six months he's been alive. He wants to change that, but Miss Thompson has other thoughts on her mind. She doesn't want Mrs. McKinley to come around her kid, and she also doesn't want the judge to feel sorry for her. This child may or may not be your biological child. That's what I'm saying. That probably is the most sense you've made today. And it didn't make no sense but, to me, but it was not I, true. Of course it didn't, Miss Thompson. It wasn't of true. Of course it, it was not true. I, you don't I, have I, to feel sorry for I me, because do. God I has do. been blessing me oh, yes. and my children, and Listen. I have been taking care of them. I put a roof over their head, and I don't have to explain it. Miss Thompson has gotten her moment to say what she wants to say, and now it's time for us to get to the truth. Is the child for Mr. McKinley or not? Mr. McKinley, you are the father. And he's the handsome.
handsome young, he's a handsome baby. He get compliments all the time, so I, I never did want drama. It just hurt me when I asked for something and they don't do it. I wish I had little boxes and I could wrap it up for you all, put a bow on it and send you out. Like, life is perfect now. If a woman sets your clothes on fire, you may want to run away from her. However, Mr. Golden isn't doing that. Instead, he's trying to prove that he's the father of her nine-month-old child, Andrea. He's also suing for $998 of clothing that his girlfriend, Ms. Campbell, set on fire. Ms. Campbell, on the other hand, says Andrea doesn't belong to Mr. Golden and says that once she proves that it's not his baby, she never wants to hear from him again. All right, so Mr. Golden, why do you think Ms. Campbell is denying that you're Andrea's father? Because she hate me. Really? Explain. She hate me because I slept with her best friend. You slept with her best friend? Yes, ma'am. But I did it to get back. You did? Yeah. Well, why would you do that? I did it to get back out of the spice because she used to do crazy stuff to me far as burning clothes and... Ms. Campbell says she was never popping up anywhere. She says that Mr. Golden saw their relationship as a game, and that sounds true. If he didn't, why would he be sleeping with her best friend? So why are you sleeping with her best friend and why are you popping up places? What is going on? She crazy. Your Honor, the reason why I burnt his clothes is because he told me he was going to walk to the store, right? But usually it's me and him walking to the store. Yes. He's walking with a girl, like close, oh. side by side, close. So I walks up to him, I'm like, what you doing? Who, who is she? He turned around, started running. That's right. Miss Campbell burnt those clothes and she isn't apologizing for it. Mr. Golden believes that this hate in Miss Campbell's heart is the reason why she she's decided to not acknowledge that Andrea is his biological daughter. Ms. Campbell, on the other hand, says that Mr. Golden isn't even the type to be a father. Did you have sex with him? Yes, Without protection? Yes, but it wasn't around the time when my baby was conceived, when she was It wasn't. So, Mr. Golden, did she tell you she was pregnant? How did you find out? Her mom. Her mom told you. Did she say, Jasmine's pregnant and you're the father? She asked me when the last time that we had had sex. And I told her that it was around about Christmas time. Ms. Campbell was sleeping with her boyfriend and Mr. Golden right about the same time, and she didn't use protection with them. Mr. Golden believes that this boyfriend never existed because he hasn't seen her, and even her mother has never seen him. Mr. Golden believes it's all just made up to spite him. Things get even more interesting when Ms. Campbell's mother comes in to testify on behalf of Mr. Golden. This other boyfriend that she says she had? No, ma'am, I did not. You've never seen this guy? No, ma'am, I did not see him. So you believe Mr. Golden is? I believe he is the father of my grandbaby. You yes. do? Yes, ma'am. Why do you think your daughter would make up that she has another boyfriend? Because she hates him. These are huge accusations. Why would anyone make a phantom boyfriend just not acknowledge the real father of her baby? And how much does Ms. Campbell really dislike Mr. Golden? People who dislike one another don't usually sleep together, but Ms. Campbell just admitted that she'd slept with Mr. Golden even after burning his clothes. Around the time Ms. Campbell gave birth, the hate was so strong that she stopped Mr. Robert from coming to see her child. But things get even spookier. Your Honor, did they... birth certificate don't have no name on your Honor. Pass that to me, please, Jerome. What did you say, Mr. Golden? The... Speak louder. Her birth certificate <clears throat> doesn't have any name on it. Listed under father's name, nobody. Mm. Nobody. Now, you saying, Miss Campbell, that you know who the child's father is and it was your boyfriend and you know it's definitely not Mr. Golden. Why is your boyfriend's name on this birth certificate? I want to be the father. The question now is, how could Miss Campbell have a boyfriend that no one has ever seen? Miss Campbell keeps saying that Mr. Robert can't play the role of a father because he can't provide for the child. But that doesn't mean anything when it comes down to the question of whether the child is Mr. Robert's or not. To make matters even more confusing, Ms. Campbell's mom says Mr. Robert and Ms. Campbell are probably still having sex. Maybe because when you're I not was there. there was a bag of cheese puffs. 50 cent, not even the dollar Your bag. Honey, he has the bought money bag. over to my not house even the dollar for baby. the baby. They've been having sex for four off. years. They probably still having sex. And then he just almost <laughs> giggles, so I know that's true. True. No, it's not true. True. Now, Ms. Campbell's argument makes some sense. She and Mr. Robert might have had sex, but it wasn't around the time that Andrea was conceived. At least that's what she wants us to believe. Anyway, let's get to the DNA results and put this issue to bed. Mr. Golden, you are not the father. Huh? Thank you. Come on back in, Mr. Golden. You can have a seat if you need to. I just want to go. I'm sorry. Mr. Golden, come sit down. It's going to be okay, babe. I know you're upset. You don't want to go. Ms. Campbell, you've maintained yes. that he was not the child's father. Yes, Your Honor. 
Cases on paternity court usually involve a man and a woman, but this one seems to be between a much older woman and a younger lady. And the older lady has a very sharp mouth. Ms. Audrey says that Ms. Martin is taking advantage of her son by pinning a baby that isn't his on him. And Ms. Martin says that's a complete lie. Ms. Audrey, you say the defendant is taking advantage of your son by pinning a baby on him, and you have physical proof that her two-year-old daughter, Skyla, is not your grandchild. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Martin, you claim that the plaintiff is a monster-in-law and is denying your daughter only because she doesn't like you. You need help and hope to get some once the results are revealed. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. It kind of looks like Ms. Audrey is acting for the camera with all her sassiness. And what does she mean they call her Queen DNA? How many times has she done this with her wife's kids? Does she go through this routine every time? That must be stressful. Let's see what Ms. Martin has to say about all of this entrapment business. You don't have to like her, your but you can you use know. respectful language. I was not the that mother that. of my grandchild. Okay, you're Where right. I'm from, they call me Queen DNA. So until I get a DNA test to prove that's my grandbaby, I am not accepting the responsibility for no baby. That's not none of mine. But she was claiming her at first, though, Miss Archery. All right, hold on. Let, let me come to you, Miss Martin. This is going to be a really tough one because Miss Audrey doesn't look like she's going to let anyone talk. Not even the judge. Now, we know that Miss Martin got married to Miss Audrey's child against Miss Audrey's wishes. And Miss Audrey went to great lengths to stop that wedding from happening. That's my husband. That's your husband. Oh, yes, your husband. My husband. So he's still your husband. Getting married yes, to you. Yes, yes, your honor. Cause okay. I got a phone call. I was getting married down the street from my house. So I, walk, I was on my way walking down there to start the marriage. And my friend, that's why I was going. I told her to go start the she wedding. She tried to stop when the wedding. When I got dropped off, she tried to stop the wedding. Move your butt way to a cliff so you can get married to him. That's crazy. Ms. Martin left her own wedding venue and moved to a different location just to get married, just because of Ms. Audrey. Ms. Audrey said she would have followed them if she had a car and would have stopped the wedding. There's nothing crazier than that. So why does Ms. Audrey hate Ms. Martin so much? Uh, no, really, explain to me what's going on. I got a phone on. call that she was getting married down the street from my house. So I got out of my bed and I started walking down the street to where she was getting married at. A friend sent me walking and she offered me a ride. How did you find out she, she was crazy. getting married? Someone called me and told me. Your that son didn't tell you? No. No, he didn't tell me. It gets even crazier. When Ms. Audrey went to the hospital and kept acting crazy, she was removed from the premises. This made her even more angry and made her hate her supposed daughter-in-law so much more. But Miss Audrey must have some evidence for her claims, right? Well, it turns out she does. So, Miss Audrey, you said that's not my grandchild instant. Yes. She don't have the toes like my son. Yes, his she toes cross, yes, his big does. toe is here, and his just toe next they to overlap. Toe, it crawls over like that. And I have proof, Your Honor, that he is that is not his baby because her toes don't do that. Yes, they do, and Your she Honor. Thick eyebrows as me and my son and my daughter have. She's so too. I know they that's haven't grew yet. I mean, they grow. All right. It kind of looks like Ms. Audrey's evidence is pretty bad since it's inconclusive. Importantly, even if the baby's toes didn't cross, it wouldn't mean anything as that doesn't indicate whether a child is biologically related to her or not. Anyway, so Ms. Martin, has your husband accepted the baby or does he have doubts? No, he doesn't have any doubts. It's her. And she hasn't even tried to bond with the baby, so of course you're gonna think she's not yours. Why would you I bond with the baby? Let's not know for you a fact it's to my get son. To know her. Had I had them, I did my own year, DNA wait, test to make she's sure. She's two years old. But there's a smoking gun we have not heard about yet. Ms. Martin once told her husband that Skyla, her baby, didn't belong to him. She did this because her husband left her to be with another woman. And at that time, Ms. Martin had also slept with another man. So Ms. Audrey might seem crazy, but this case isn't so cut and dry. To make things even more interesting, that man that Ms. Martin slept with also appeared in court. Wait a minute now. Miss Cooper, this is your ex-boyfriend? Yes, Your Honor. That was a mistake, Your Honor. So, Ms. Martin, you slept with your sister-in-law's boyfriend? Yes, now who paid your honor? That was before, your honor. That was a mistake. How did that happen? When my husband, no. When my husband was away, your honor, he was, you know, doing a lot of different things with other women. He also says that Ms. Martin once told him he was the biological father once on the phone. Now, that's a twist we didn't see coming. But it's time to reveal everything and put this matter to bed. Who is really the father of Skyla? Let's find out. Pertaining to whether Mr. Martin or Mr. Gott is the father of two-year-old Skyla Martin. The biological father is Mr. Martin. I'll take that for 200, Your Honor. 
I told you. You are the grandmother, Miss Autry. Miss Ritchiel is spoiled for choice. One man signed the birth certificate of her daughter Jasmine, and another has been paying child support. She's in court today to determine who the real father of her daughter is. Mr. Harris, the man who was paying child support for Jasmine, is also in court with his wife, and he's furious that he spent two months in jail for $6,000 in delinquent child support payments. He's also in court to get the whole matter cleared and determine if he's Jasmine's father or not. He had said that we could be together, so therefore he had me thinking we were together, no, but... It was just a hookup. That's all it was. All right, so Mr. Harris, you claim this was not a relationship. It's not. But you do admit to having a sexual relationship with Miss Rochelle. I do. This is how it almost always starts, isn't it? A man and a woman get into a relationship and aren't clear about the goals of that relationship. And then they have a kid and no one knows what to do. Anyway, when Miss Ritchiel found out she was pregnant, she didn't contact Mr. Harris. Instead, she contacted the other man who she was sleeping with. Did this other man sign the birth certificate when the baby was born? Yes, he did. Oh, Jerome, let me see that. So this other man was with you through the pregnancy? Yes, he was. And he, he was, was there, there at the birth, too? Yes, Your Honor. And signed the birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so were you hoping here Mr. Harris was the father? I was actually hoping that the other guy was. Mr. Harris doesn't agree with this at all. He says he lived opposite Miss Richiel, and he saw many other men entering and exiting her house. Of course, this doesn't mean she slept with them. She might just know a lot of guys. The issue now is how did Mr. Harris end up being the child support guy when Ms. Richiel herself says she knew he wouldn't be there for her? I mean, that's how it happened. I missed my DNA appointment. I rescheduled it because I didn't have a way to get there. So I had another appointment, but I didn't make that one also. So they just deemed me as the father without actually Again, having yep. the DNA. You were, so you were named the father by default because yes. you failed to show up for your DNA test. Yes, Your Honor. Well, that doesn't seem fair, but it didn't end there. After he was deemed as the father by default, Mr. Harris was also hauled into jail for missing child support payments. And said that I owe like $6,000 back in chi child support. So I guess I owe, I guess I owe for over a couple of years or so, I guess. And um, Jasmine is four. Yeah, she's four. So you got arrested and you spent how long in jail? Uh, two and a half months. I was uh, a month and a half in Georgia. Then they moved me from Georgia to a hold in Kentucky. Ms. Richiel doesn't come off great here at all. And if the DNA test proves that Mr. Harris isn't the father, he would have spent two and a half months in prison for nothing. Now, what does Ms. Richiel have to say about this? Ms. Rochelle, is it a possibility that he's not the biological father? You yourself let someone else sign the birth certificate. For one, there was not a lot of people going in and out of my house. He but just, you did admit that there was one other guy because that's the person that you let accompany was, you through the pregnancy. It was the other guy and him. That's it. There's no Excuse, one else. Your Honor, um, when I first met, well, when she first started contacted me on his phone. However, Mrs. Harris has a different story to tell. She says that last year when Ms. Richiel contacted her, she told her that there were three possible fathers for Jasmine and Mr. Harris was just one of them. But today in court, Ms. Richiel denied that conversation ever happened. There's a third guy. There is only two. Did you tell her three? No, I did yes, not. Your Honor. So this conversation didn't happen? No, it didn't. Yes, Your Honor, it did. So I have no reason Mr. to Mr. Harris, here. have you developed a relationship with Jasmine at all? No. I, I've only seen a child maybe once, and that's when I... That's One when I was, time? Yeah, that's when I was living, actually, in the state of Kentucky. Mr. Harris has only seen Jasmine once, and Ms. Richel doesn't seem bothered about this. Why? Well, that's because the other potential father is already taking care of the child physically, and she just needs child support payments from Mr. Harris. That way, she enjoys the benefits of having two men father her child. One man to pay the child support payments, and one man to be physically there for her. That sounds extremely cruel to both men, but let's see what the DNA results say. Mr. Harris, you are the father. <laughs> I just, I don't want to deal with her for 14 more years. Jerome, get me my violin. I just so I can play a tune to this. You have a beautiful little girl. Yes. It's time for you to step up to the plate. Do you understand? Mr. Fisher says he made the biggest mistake of his life just two months ago when he signed the birth certificate of two-month-old Sophia. Why would anyone ever say something so cruel about such a cute baby? It turns out his fiance told him a month ago that he may not actually be her father. Ms. Doyle says she also made the biggest mistake of her life when she cheated on Mr. Fisher. She's in court today hoping and praying that he he is her father and hopes the relationship can continue after today. I love Brittany and I love Sophia to death. They're my world, but she lied to me. She kept the truth from me and it kills me. I hope I am Sophia's father. 
I love her to death. That's my baby. So you say you love her? Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell me what you feel? Sorrow, pain, everything. It all hurts bad. Because for the first month of this baby's life. This is so painful. Mr. Fisher was in bliss for that first month of knowing Sophia. He treated her like his child and wanted to be there for her in every way. But once Ms. Doyle broke the news that he may not be the baby's father, his heart was shattered into 10,000 pieces. I think that he is the father. I'm, I know 100%. I mean, he was there through the whole pregnancy and he does everything for me. He works, he supports our family, he runs my baths, he cooks my food, he cleans our house. He rubs my back and rubs my feet. He's a great father. And yet, she decided to cheat on him and throw him into this situation. It's really hard to imagine a more cruel thing, especially from someone you love as much as Mr. Fisher loves Ms. Doyle. She's beautiful. Her eyes, amazing. Her body, she's gorgeous. And she treats me like a man wanted to be treated all the way up until this happened. And so you decide to settle down Yes. And you had this beautiful relationship. It felt perfect to you. It's everything. Everything I've ever wanted. And then, Miss Doyle, how do we end up here? What happened? Um, one of his family members, I was on vacation. You can clearly see that Mr. Fisher thought he was living the perfect life. He had a perfect woman who loved him perfectly, and he wanted to settle down, have a child, and make her his wife. They'd even gotten engaged and everything. The only question is, how did we end up here? He was with at the time, had texted me, and he said, Trey's cheating on you, which we call him Trey, but his name is John. So me, I was hurt. And so I went to be by myself at the pool area where I was at at the time. And a guy walked up to me and he's like, well, you look like you need somebody to talk to. Do you want to go to my camper and talk? So, so I go back to his camper with him. Pro tip, ladies and gents. If you're on vacation and you have a partner, please do not talk to other people who might want to sleep with you. And if you do, don't follow them back to their room. And if you do. We're, he kissed me and then we had sex. Don't do that. And even if you do that, try to use protection. Ms. Doyle here didn't use protection, and that's why she's right here in paternity court. The horrible thing about this case is that Mr. Fisher didn't cheat on Ms. Doyle. So the family member sent a text and lied. Yes, Your Honor. And you went and had revenge sex. Yes, Your Honor. And the whole time it was a lie? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Fisher, as you stand here, I can see how difficult it is to hear your fiance describe the night she had sex with another person. Wow, that's a lot to take in. And Mr. Fisher never learned about Ms. Doyle cheating on him until after Sophia was born. Whenever I took the pregnancy test, I knew that I had cheated on him. So whenever I seen the lines, I was kind of upset. I was like, well, this isn't happening, you know? Because I knew, but he didn't. He didn't know that I had cheated on him. And I just couldn't find it in myself to tell him because I, he was so excited I didn't want to hurt him, you know? It's hard to quantify just how much pain Mr. Fisher is feeling right now. We can only hope that the DNA test comes back with good news and he is the father of Sophia. Let's see what the test says. Mr. Fisher, you are the father. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Oh. <laughs> you can stand there with him if you'd like. I think we're gonna get married when we get back home. Mr. Woody is in court today only to learn one thing, if he is the biological father of Ms. Wilson's son. He was initially sure he was the father. In fact, he was so sure that he named the child Michael Woody Jr. However, Ms. Wilson says she slept with another man during the time of conception, and as such, she cannot be honestly sure who the father of Woody Jr. is. Well, I have a three-year-old daughter already, so when I found out I was having a son, I was excited because what man doesn't want to have a junior? you know so I got plans made you know I'm ready to go play baseball and basketball with them and you know all the stuff a father's supposed to do with a son so I'm, I'm just ready so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to to be a, a father to a boy now the fact that mr. Woody isn't in a relationship with ms. Wilson lets him know that there is a strong possibility that he might not be the boy's father got you all here today when I met mr. Woody I was walking down the street with my friend we were drunk and we were going off to the store and he was in the apartment complex holding you know Know, with his daughter in a stroller and he said you're cute and I was like oh you're cute too so we walked to the store and we walked back to my friend's house we had intercourse okay so I have to ask you this was he the only man you were intimate with during that time no your honor ah that doesn't sound great at all Ms. Wilson says there was just one other man she was intimate with during that period and either of them could be little Woody's dad when Ms. Wilson found out she was pregnant she sent a message to Mr. Woody immediately however the girl 
girl that Mr. Woody was dating at the time was the one responding, not him. The girl that I was dating was responding to the messages that she was sending me. Jerome, let me see that. What, what evidence is this year presenting? Um, I have a couple of pieces of evidence, and I got the picture of me and my son, and I have the picture, I have the messages from Facebook. So this is a message from Davina Wilson. I'm pregnant, so I hope you know we're getting a DNA test when the baby's born, and I'm hitting you up with this child support. I'll see you in court. After this, Mr. Woody came back into town to play his part because he knew he could be the baby's potential father. He went to ultrasounds with her. Her, went to her doctor's appointments and everything, and was there for her. He was even there when the baby was born and cut the umbilical cord. Interestingly, Ms. Wilson didn't send this message to the other guy who could be the baby's father. So why you? Why did you just single out Mr. Woody because if there was another guy? While, while I was sleeping with Mr. Woody, I, you know, I had sex with my boyfriend and everything. He was the last person I initially had intercourse with. So the last time I had intercourse, it was with Mr. Woody. Well, if they were both in the window of conception, why did Ms. Wilson not tell the other guy that she could be having his baby? The question now is, when did Mr. Woody start having doubts since he did all of this for the baby? Her sister, you know, I'm at, I'm at one of my friend's uh, wakes, you know, he had just passed away. So, mm -hmm. you know, we had to wake or whatever. And I see her sister, I'm good friends with her uh, son's father. So, you know, we start talking and whoop, whoop, and uh, she comes up to me like, Mike, you, or, you need to, I think you should go get a DNA test, you know? That's not the only reason Mr. Woody's doubts are back. He also says someone told him that Ms. Wilson was pregnant by another man. It's time to see what the DNA test says about all of this. Mr. Woody. You are not his father. Oh. He what? what? <laughs> you okay? I know, I know. Ms. Bailey is in court today with her mother, and she's here to argue that her four-month-old child belongs to her estranged husband, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker, on the other hand, says he cannot be the father of four-month-old Zachariah, and suggests that Ms. Bailey and her mother hit the streets to find out the real father of the baby. Your Honor, I've come here today because Mr. Parker has done nothing, not a single thing, for my daughter or my grandson. He left her when she was 16 weeks pregnant, didn't look back, and he is living his life with Without responsibility. I'm the baby's father. I provide for the baby. I buy the formula, the diapers. I'm there to hold the baby when he cries. Well, that paints Mr. Parker in the worst light. If he turns out to be the father, then he would have put his baby's mother through possibly the worst experience of her life. But Mr. Parker is adamant that the child isn't his. He hasn't even seen the baby one time. I've had the same phone number for four years and he hasn't called me once. And you claim he left you when you were six 16 weeks pregnant? He left me when I was 16 weeks pregnant, 10 days before Christmas, and 16 days before my birthday. He left me. He abandoned me. He left and he didn't look back. Wow, that is cruel. There must be some reason or rationale behind this awful behavior, right? Something must be wrong here, right? The last few days there, Your Honor, she told me that I wasn't worth nothing, that I, I was not allowed to eat, that I was not allowed to be a part of this family. That's a lie. That's a <laughs> yeah, lie. He, he lie. wanted her to cook separate meals besides the meal that she cooked for the family. He wanted special food. And in these days and time, that is very hard. I wasn't doing that. And he wants... He wanted me to take care of him, you know, like I was his mate. That doesn't sound like a significant disagreement to abandon your 16-week-old pregnant wife for, is it? Should she even be cooking in such a condition? Doesn't seem like it. And Mr. Parker and Ms. Bailey are married. They are still married right now as they give their testimony. And Mr. Parker left over some cooking arrangements. I don't know about you, but that feels horrendous. But guess what? Mr. Parker has other, much better reasons for leaving his pregnant wife. This entire situation anyway, whether you left or you got ran out. First it started, she'd start wearing makeup and everything. She was wearing it to church. That was, it ain't so funny. She never wore makeup before. And she started wearing don't. it just to go to pay the bills, run out to go over, just to go see the neighbors. I, I didn't know if she was trying makeup. to get something going with the neighbors or not. <laughs> Thing that really made me suspicious, Your Honor. It turns out Ms. Bailey only did this because all the Christmas presents were in the room and she has an eight-year-old who might be messing around in there. But somehow, Mr. Parker believed that this was some evidence of infidelity 
facility. He believed that there could be some dirty photos in there. Incredible detective work, Mr. Parker. I'm trying to understand, this is your marital home. Ma'am, at this point, I was put told to sleep in the living room floor and not to, and I was not to eat anything in the home. I was to go to work and bring money home and that was it. No, Your Honor, he wasn't. I was pregnant and at this point, I hadn't trusted him since October. It seems this marriage has a lot to eat of tiny issues that eventually led up to the huge one where Mr. Parker walks out. Okay, now take me back to that moment. It was the 25th or the 26th. I called her up because it was the day the baby was supposed to have been born, left a message on her answering machine because <laughs> she hadn't told us anything. Did you accompany her to doctor's appointments? No, you're you I was not allowed to, ma'am. I was told I was too annoying and I needed to stay home. At this point, I didn't know if it was... Another thing that annoyed me, Parker, is that he wasn't on the birth certificate of the child, even though he is supposed to be on it automatically since he's married to Ms. Bailey. Ms. Bailey says she gave the hospital his name, but they refused to place it on the certificate because they knew they were having marital problems problems. This means the child isn't even bearing Mr. Parker's last name. Well, it's not too easy to blame Mr. Parker for denying paternity after all that. But you cannot really blame Ms. Bailey either since Parker already abandoned her 16 weeks into the pregnancy. Let's hear from Mr. Parker's mother about this. Before they separated, Your Honor, she had brought him to my mother's and dumped him out two or three times because she needed some time alone. And then she'd call him and want him to come back when it was payday. My son, they had one card that he bought. He met her and signed that car over to her so she would have a car for her and these children. And it seems like this marriage has too many issues. But weirdly, I don't think that infidelity is one of those issues. Let's see what the DNA test has to say about that. Mr. Parker. Yes, Your Honor. You are his father. I told you. Told you. Told you. We're gonna finish paying the lawyer and file for custody. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I wanna see the two parents in my chambers without their mother. Ms. Bronson has always known that Mr. Roberts is her biological father, but extenuating circumstances have led her to paternity court today to prove paternity. This is because Mr. Roberts has suddenly gotten information that may prove that he isn't her father. Now, another man, Mr. Banks, is claiming that he is Ms. Bronson's father. So Ms. Bronson, how do you feel knowing your father is denying paternity? Your Honor, I feel Mr. Roberts is my father. He's the only father I've known for 29 years. That's my father, period. I know him my whole life. He the only one I call my father. That's who I grew up known as my father. So Mr. Roberts is my biological father. Mr. Roberts says he feels the same way about Ms. Bronson, and he's just recently found out about the doubts that may exist as regards Ms. Bronson's paternity. He's been her father for 29 years and has always taken responsibility for her and provided everything she needs. So where did this doubt come from? What happened in 2009? I had a phone conversation with my mother. Then she mentioned Mr. Banks. And she said, don't you remember the guy that I told you who thought he was your father? When she said that to me, Your Honor, it was a what moment? Like, what are you talking about? So she said that he wanted to get in contact with me. I think we, I gave her my number to give to him or she gave me his number. I can't remember how we actually got in contact. Wow, that must be traumatic. Getting told another man could be your father after 29 years of being with a different father is insane. Anyway, Ms. Bronson didn't tell Mr. Roberts about this. Instead, she told his fiance, Ms. Blair, who is also in court today. A few years ago, I Ms. Blair told me that she needed to, t to talk to me about something. And that's when I found out. I was kept in the dark about all this. I never knew anything about Mr. Banks. I also, um, you know, spent eight months in jail for unpaid child support. And, 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 and I'm, I'm 75000 dollars in arrears. It would shake anyone who had to experience it. If it turns out Mr. Roberts isn't Ms. Bronson's father today, it would be an incomparable heartbreak for him. Become aware that you potentially could be Ms. Bronson's biological father. I could recall. Uh, when she was about six or seven, and I uh, ran to her mother and Jasmine and her sister in the park. And then they, um, she had told me that Jasmine was my uh, my daughter then. On the other hand, Mr. Roberts only found out that he may not be Ms. Bronson's father when she was 19. Wow. Did you think about that day for years? Yes, I always thought uh, that she was my daughter after the mother told me, because I even took her upstairs to meet my mother. Oh, wait, so on this day when you all met at the park, then you took Jasmine, Ms. Bronson, upstairs 
to see your mother? Yes, because she did it upstairs. And you went upstairs and you said, Mom... I have just found out that uh, Jasmine is my daughter. That's a lot to take in. And Mr. Roberts didn't learn about any of this until much later. Ms. Bronson also doesn't remember this episode at all. And through all this, Mr. Roberts kept paying child support and was even locked up for missing child support payments. So, Mr. Roberts, up until this point, you didn't even know Mr. Banks existed. No, you You did I, nothing. I, I knew nothing of uh, uh, Mr. Banks. I dated Miss Bronson. I even married her two months after Jasmine was born, and I went on my business as raising as the start of my family. But possibly, if I'd known that earlier, it probably wouldn't have been. Yes, Mr. Roberts, someone should have said something. The good news is we can get the test results right now and put this matter to bed forever. Let's see the DNA test. Mr. Banks, you are the father. Do you want to be a part of her life? Yes, I do, because I love you, and I always will love you, as I told you before. Now, if I can walk down these stairs to give you a hug, if I may, may Will you I? allow that? It's fine. 